Hello, I am Kanan Rajendran from the University of Ghent, IMEP. I will be presenting our work on thermomechanical noise measurement of steel nanobeams on a silicon photonics MEMS platform. In the recent years, MEMS or microelectromechanical systems leveraging mechanical motion in the nano to the micro scale have enabled novel photonic functionalities. For example, take the figure shown here. It's a phase shifter which uses a low power comb drive for in-plane mechanical motion. Or, for example, a tunable grating coupler with out-of-plane motion. Or, for enabling novel on-chip nano-optomechanical sensing functionalities. For example, a displacement sensor is shown in the rightmost figure. For mechanical sensing application, photonic MEMS is particularly attractive because they are compact, integrated and offer high displacement resolution. But these sensors require sensitive calibration of the mechanical resonator's motion. This is often done by measuring the random thermal motion or the Brownian motion of the resonator. This procedure is also known as thermomechanical calibration. It invokes the equipartition theorem that relates the energy of the thermal motion of the resonator to its mechanical displacement. Also, by measuring the thermal noise, key figure of merits of the mechanical resonator can be determined, such as the resonance frequency and the mechanical quality factor. In this work, we perform such thermomechanical noise measurement for our silicon photonics MEMS device, which is a MEMS phase shifter fabricated on IMX ISF 50G, an active silicon photonics platform. It is a mount sender where one of the arms contains a W-shaped curved nanophotonic waveguide of width 415 nanometers and thickness 220 nanometers as shown in the schematic. A thin nanobeam of width and thickness 220 nanometer follows the curvature of the waveguide. The nanobeam is attached to a low stiffness comb drive. Supplying a bias voltage to the comb drive results in in-plane motion of the nanobeam. That is, the nanobeam is pulled away from the waveguide. On the right is a microscope image of the optical phase shifting arm of the MZI. We can see the suspended W-shaped waveguide, nanobeam and the comb drive. The silicon device layer is shown in purple, whereas the suspended region where the buried oxide cladding is removed is shown in blue. The MEMS phase shifter is also vacuum sealed using a silicon cap. A microscope image of one such package device is shown here. The transduction principle of the phase shifter is that the 450 nanometer waveguide supports a fundamental TE optical mode, which evanescently couples to the thin nanobeam as shown in the inset on the right. Due to the relative displacement of the beam to the waveguide as shown in the animation, the effective index of the optical mode is betrothed, which results in a phase change. A plot of the change in the effective index per nanometer of displacement of the beam as a function of the gap is shown. We observe that as the gap reduces, the change in the effective index increases. For our device, the gap can be changed or reduced by actuating the comb drive. Now, let's take a look at the fabrication steps involved in the release of MEMS devices on IMEX ISIP 50G platform. A typical cross-section of the platform is shown here. It contains passive components such as waveguides and grating couplers as well as active components such as modulators and photodetectors. In the schematic, the nanobeam is highlighted. Note that the top oxide above the nanobeam has been removed. First, atomic layer deposition of 50 nanometers of alumina is performed. This is done to protect the back end of the line from the buried oxide removal step. Following this, edge windows are defined over the nanobeams by selectively removing the alumina layer via ICPRI dry etching. Finally, a vapor HF edge step is carried out for the isotropic removal of the buried oxide cladding layer, thereby releasing the MEMS devices. We also perform vacuum packaging of the MEMS phase shifter. This is done by thermocompressed transfer bonding of an SOI wafer that contains thin silicon caps to a photonic wafer that contains our MEMS components. The bonding process is carried out in a vacuum environment as shown in the schematic. From the schematic, we also see that the silicon caps contain sealing rings which are covered by a metal layer. The sealing rings on the cap wafer are aligned and bonded to metal layers on the photonic IC, thus forming enclosed cavities. 
Following this, the handle and the box layer of the silicon cap wafer are removed using dry etching. A microscope image of the final vacuum package device is shown here. We can see the photonics MEMS IC as well as the thin silicon sealing caps. The vacuum packaging is done to protect the device from atmospheric contamination and humidity, also to suppress viscous air damping of the mechanical resonator. We first measure the transmission response of the MCI for different actuation voltages. From the plot, we clearly observe that as we increase the MEMS voltage from 0 to 36 volt, the MCI transmission spectra shifts. This is because the MEMS actuation increases the waveguide beam gap. Once the transmission response is known, the thermal noise measurements can be carried out. The experimental setup is shown here. We have a Santec tunable laser that acts as a probe that injects 13 dBm of optical power into the input grating coupler of the device. The seal chip is maintained at a constant temperature of 23 degrees Celsius. Bias voltage can be applied to the comb drives via bond pads and DC probes. But for our thermal noise experiments, we set the driving voltage to be zero. The thermal noise modulated light from the device is split using a 99 is to 1 splitter. The majority of the light is incident on a photodetector with a bandwidth of 1.6 GHz and a noise equivalent power of 9.3 picowatt per root hertz. The RF output from the photodetector is fed to an electrical spectrum analyzer with a resolution bandwidth and a video bandwidth of 24 Hz. The one person tapped optical power is used to continuously monitor the transmission response of the device using a power meter. Here, I have plotted the RF noise spectrum obtained from the ESA when the drive voltage is set to 0 volts and the probe is parked at 1544.4 nanometer. From the plot, we observe that there are several different peaks. Each of them corresponds to a different mechanical mode of either the waveguide or the nanobeam. By fitting these peaks using the equations shown here, where SP is the RF power spectral density measured from the ESA, SPW is the white noise background measured on the ESA, alpha is the transduction factor, and SX is the displacement spectral density which is obtained from the equipartition theorem and given by the following equation where m effective is the effective mass of the different mechanical modes. This is calculated using COMSOL simulation where T is the temperature that is set during the experiment. The four parameters highlighted in green the mechanical frequency, the mechanical quality factor, alpha which is the transduction factor and SPW which is the white noise background are obtained by fitting the different resonance peaks. The fit is first performed on the thermal noise peaks obtained between 2 and 3 MHz. Here, four different thermal peaks are observed as shown in the plots. The mechanical frequency, mechanical quality factor as determined from the fits, the effective mass as simulated on COMSOL are tabulated. At the bottom, the mechanical mode profiles as simulated from COMSOL are shown that WG represents the waveguide, NB represents the nanobeam. So, we have an in-plane waveguide mode at 2.06 MHz, an in-plane nanobeam mode at 2.23 and 2.32 MHz, and an out-of-plane waveguide mode at 2.64 MHz. A maximum Q factor of 168.5 is observed for the 2.64 MHz out-of-plane waveguide mode. A similar exercise is performed for the thermal noise spectrum obtained between 4 and 5 MHz. Here too, we observe four different thermal peaks as shown in the plots. The corresponding mechanical frequency, mechanical quality factor, effective mass and the mechanical mode profiles are tabulated. We have an out-of-plane waveguide mode at 4.1 MHz an in-plane nanobeam mode at 4.25 and 4.31 MHz and an out-of-plane nanobeam mode at 4.75 MHz. By fitting the different thermomechanical noise peaks observed, the average white noise background SPW is determined to be minus 120 dBm. The average transduction factor alpha is found to be 13.16 picowatt per picometer square. With these two parameters and the resolution bandwidth, the displacement sensitivity can be determined using the equation shown here. 
the displacement sensitivity is found to be 1.8 femtometer per road hertz. This sets the minimum possible displacement that is that can be detected by our device and our transduction scheme. And the displacement sensitivity observed here is comparable to other MZI and MEMS-based optomechanical systems. In conclusion, we show the thermal motion of a vacuum package suspended nano beam and nanophotonic waveguide on a silicon photonics MEMS platform. The resonance frequencies and the Q factors of the observed mechanical modes are determined. A maximum Q factor of 168.5 is observed for the 2.64 MHz out of plane waveguide mode. The displacement sensitivity is measured to be 1.8 femtometer per root hertz, which is comparable to the state of the art MEMS and MCI based optomechanical sensors. Finally, I would like to thank my collaborators on the Morphic project and acknowledge the funding from the European projects HOT and OMT. Thank you for your time and if you have any questions, please go ahead.